Hey guys, Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center today. We're going to go over reptile impactions, okay? Now we just did an episode just not long ago on prolapses and that sparked the idea and the questions about impaction because impaction can cause prolapse. Now, first, first, we're going to do two things here, okay? We're getting close to that 500 subscriber mark and that 500 subscriber special episode that we're going to put up of reptiles feeding. We're also fixing to get started with integration in these YouTube videos, okay? Now, if you own a business and you want to see your business advertised in there, get in touch with us. We'll have uh, information on how you can get in touch with us down in the description. Um, if you want to see your product integrated into our videos, uh, then also the same thing, get in touch with us, and we will discuss further about doing either product placement or uh, a type of advertisement for somebody's business, for your business, okay? Now, let's get right into this. Reptile impactions, okay? First, there's so many reasons why and so many things that can cause impaction inside of reptilian species, okay? Uh, one being too cool of an atmosphere, okay? What happens is reptiles when they eat if their habitat is not warm enough let's say they don't fully go into a brumative state but it's just not warm enough that it can process the food down then what happens is they get a buildup or a backup of fecal matter um, which will cause and can cause impaction okay uh, with this particular portion of the issue when it comes to impaction, just make sure the habitat is right. Now, right now we're in wintertime, okay? Or we're coming up on wintertime. It's already cold. And we take a lot of calls during the wintertime and pet owners just want to know, they tell us, man, I haven't done anything different. The lighting's the same. Uh, the habitat's the same. We haven't moved it, nothing else. And it's just simply due to certain factors, barometric pressure dropping, uh, depending on how close to doors and windows maybe they are, uh, mooshes of cold air coming in, how close to vents that they are. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into that. During the wintertime, we tell people just go, uh, you know, go up 25 watts and then in the summertime go down 25 watts. Just compensate for it. But however, in those times <clears throat> when we talk about impaction due to temperature, in those times when the temperatures may be a little bit lower, it's not low enough to put them into a brumative state, but it may not be warm enough for them to process their food fast enough that it doesn't sit and start to compile in their system. Now, another thing that can happen from that is just something simply called gut rot, um, where they don't produce uh, bile and waste fast enough where the food doesn't process, it just sits in their system and literally rots, uh, and it essentially poisons them on the inside. That can happen. Um, but when we talk about true impaction, that would be how impaction would affect due to low temperatures and food. They just simply aren't warm enough that the the matter, the food, whatever's inside of the, the stomach contents is not processing fast enough before you're giving them more food and they're taking more food down and it's just compiling on top of the problem. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, another cause of impaction is going to be due to something called foreign body matter or gastric body uh, foreign objects. All right, so they take in maybe rocks. Now these animals will take in certain little stones and pebbles and they'll uh, sometimes they'll lick the sand in cases of bearded dragons, leopard geckos, things like that. They'll lick the sand, maybe they take pieces in. That's okay in small amounts because kind of like ducks, it can also go inside of their system and it can help kind of just grind things down. It helps break some of that stuff down. Doesn't hurt anything. But in the case where they take in something too big <clears throat> or something that they shouldn't have in the midst of taking food in, then that foreign body gastric object can cause a blockage inside of. Now, in the case of, for example, a lot of your farmers <clears throat> with chicken coops will put these wooden eggs or the golf balls and things like that. And some rat snakes and corn snakes will actually take those golf balls down. That is going to cause impaction because no, that animal cannot process that. Um, if it's not regurgitated, if it's not forcibly regurgitated, whether by a human or the animal regurgitates it itself, it's not going to be able to process that down. Um, so what's going to end up happening is it's going to kill it due to impaction from a foreign body object, okay? So that's that's an example. Uh, some bedding materials, 
<coughs> some bedding materials. We prefer using cypress mulch in a lot of our natural habitats uh, and ecosystems. But, I mean, if you're talking a big piece of cypress and it takes it down, just accidentally takes it down, that can cause problems if it doesn't get brought down. Uh, now, wooden objects, things like that, yeah, the stomach acid of snakes, especially in crocodilian, uh, will break it down over time. That can happen. But also, at the same time, you can have the situation happen where it doesn't break it down and you've got that foreign body object that's inside of the stomach, okay? Um, so that is impaction due to a foreign body matter. Now, let's talk about another one. This is one that happens, um, it kind of goes back to the first one, but it's going over to the feeder side of things, the insect feeder side of things as to why um, we have impaction due to insect feeders. Crickets, superworms, dubia roaches, mealworms all have a hard exoskeleton shell. That is that insects armor protecting. Now, what happens is we could take a plastic bottle, now I could take a water bottle and put a hot dog in it, swallow that bottle, and my body would process the hot dog, but it's not going to process the water bottle, okay? It's not going to process the plastic. The same concept applies when it comes to your insect feeders. These animals process the meaty center to the supers, dubias, mills, crickets, whatever the case may be, but they do not process that exoskeleton layer. Now, one of the things that happens in the situation of either old age, especially in bearded dragons, it happens during old age, their bodies just don't process as fast as they did when they were younger, and they get this compilation, basically it compiles a big mass amount of exoskeletons unprocessed a lot of the times, and it causes impaction. It causes that blockage in there that does, is not as able and as easy to come out. Okay. Now, also with temperatures, remember, the higher the temperatures, the warmer the temperatures, the faster their bodies process. Heat is key for a lot of things when it comes to reptiles. Production of food, uh, appetite, uh, digestion of food, and uh, having uh, bowel movements, basically waste movements. <clears throat> okay. So when we start talking about it not being warm enough, okay, so the animal ate some superworms, and then you fed it again maybe that evening or the next day superworms. Well, it hasn't had a bowel movement yet, and then the next day you give it more superworms, but it may not be warm enough that he's, that he's had a bowel movement yet. And so what happens is they'll get this blockage and buildup of those exoskeletons. Now, in the case of, like I said, in the case where it's not heat-related, but it's old age related, then what we have happen is we just have them literally just not having enough bowel movements and bowel movements fast enough that they can keep their systems cleaned out of those exoskeletons. So that's something else you need to watch out for. Typically the diets, when we start talking about the feeder insects, uh, supers, dubias, mills, crickets, whatever, we don't feed crickets if we ha unless we just absolutely have to. But in the case of supers and dubias, we try and do it every other day. That'll give the animal a chance to keep his system cleaned out and it won't get a blockage due to just uh, insect exoskeletons, okay? Now, Okay, now that we've talked about some of the causes of impaction, let's talk about some of the ways that we deal with impaction. Of course, as a medical center or any kind of other experienced reptilian vet, zoological vet, they may deal with it with surgery, okay? We may deal with it with surgery if the, if the blockage is bad enough. Um, I'll show you a picture, of course, if you haven't already seen the pictures, I'll show you another picture of, uh, of an x-ray of a, bi a big blockage. Um, but we might deal with it with surgery. But one of the things that we're going to do uh, to begin with, and one of the things that you can do to begin with, uh, is just a good warm bathtub warm soak, okay? Put it in that water, 98, 100, 102, 105 degrees, somewhere around in there. Just let it sit in that water. You're going to notice a lot of times your lizards are going to start doing this motion right here. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to get that bile, they're trying to get themselves comfortable and trying to get it pushed out. Um, they're trying to get it worked down to a comfortable position. Um, one of the things that's going to help with soaking is it's going to loosen the cloaca opening. Think about our skin and water. Our skin gets really, really soft uh, and pliable. And so what happens is the same thing with lizards, their cloaca opening and the skin and the muscular tone becomes very soft. It becomes very uh, stretchy. And also with the warm water helps break down that matter inside of the stomach. Um, it just helps with that digestive process. Um, so you're going to notice them getting a little wiggly and trying to get more comfortable and trying to get that, that matter pushed down. That's another way that you could deal with it. Now, sometimes 
Uh, sometimes it'll be done with, uh, with enemas, um, a laxative enema. Um, sometimes it'll be done with oral uh, laxatives. And there's uh, several different ways that these can be dealt with. Uh, but palpating the belly, you can take and actually take your fingers right where the rear hips are, uh, rear legs, and uh, just kind of push in and roll around the belly, not too hard. And you can feel if there's a big mass, it's called palpating the belly, uh, and which is one of the things that we would do other than x-ray to be able to tell if there's a big mass or a big blockage that's potentially in there. Same thing for eggs, um, and uh, uh, same thing for uh, <clears throat> undigested, maybe undigested processed food. Uh, certain, like snakes, uh, you can tell if it's something really, really hard like a golf ball or, you know, wooden egg or whatever the case may be in, in, a, in the case of a snake um, or a piece of wood, something like that. So there's several ways that you can tell kind of what's going on inside of that belly uh, without expensive x-rays and things like that, that, but it's not detrimental or going to be harmful to the animal itself. Uh, but those are some ways of dealing with it. The best way, just hands down, is just a good warm soak. Okay? Okay, just put that animal in a bathtub, just keep that water nice and warm, and see what happens. Um, it's going to try and have that bowel movement. If it comes out, then cool deal, there you go, problem is solved. Um, if it does not come out and it's a really, really big mass, then yeah, you may have to go a little bit more drastic route uh, to getting the animal's uh, bowels cleaned out, okay? Now, this is Chad here at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We are the Reptile Rangers. We hope that this episode on reptile impaction has been helpful. Make sure to write us in. Let us know what else you want to see. All the different things that can be out there that can be filmed about. Uh, different medical things uh, about the zoo, the rangers here. Uh, whatever the case may be, write us in. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Remember, we're getting close to the 500 subscriber uh, special episode. Uh, and also, if anybody's uh, looking to, we've already had people starting to talk to us about it, but if anybody additional is looking for product placement or looking to get their business listed in one of the episodes, uh, feel free to get with us at the information right in the description down there. Uh, we'll have all of our information there along with the, the YouTube channel link that you can go to and subscribe. We look forward to seeing you again soon, either here at the zoo or on the next episode. Later.